the word of god is alive and powerful sharper than any two edged sword piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow and it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart all scripture is god breathed and is profitable for doctrine for reproof for correction for instruction in righteousness that the man of god might be mature thoroughly furnished unto all good works study to show thyself a prudent to god a workman that needeth not to be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth or accurately handling this great word of truth glory be to my yahweh sit kanu to the highest and peace be to be the mankind on this earth to those who believe in my lord and savior jesus christ by faith alone in christ alone no matter how many critics morons unbelievers with the geniusness of their mind they want to proclaim about this great christianity telling to the point that christ our lord is not been resurrected in fact even indeed he was not been crucified in fact even indeed they think the incarnation of the lord is in a conception of doubt for them who are critics who don't believe everything is lost because they don't believe because of their unbelief they are going to lose that great promises of the lord which only when they wake up in the hell to realize until then they never come because of the blindness which has been made unto their hearts the blindness which has been made unto their eyes but never they will come up to really know and seek and search until and unless they have this great belief in them that why god created man in his own image this great image has been told for us to be formed again in ephesians 4 23 and 24 followed by colossians 3 9 and 10 when we are able to give our lives as believers in the lord and savior jesus christ by faith alone in christ alone to renovate the standards of the thinking which he has given for us in romans chapter 12 verses 1 to 3 so that we could be in return made available to think why god created man and until and unless these unbelievers learn to seek and attain that thing which our lord has given for them to know that each and every word of the lord is pure every testimony of the lord is 100% sure there are nothing that can go against his word on this earth and there will be nothing that can go against this great word of the lord because the critics the morons the things pertaining like zakir maik sheikh ahmad idad are the crowd which are been now realized to take into the reality of their own lives by those standards the standards which when we can read it will be of a great value for us to realize that this men think that those standards are the only worthness of their lives but these people have failed to understand because earlier to us who have been on this earth who have failed in their duty of rightly dividing the word of the lord from the bona fide gift of the head of the department of the church who has to give that to a male believer and whose primary duty is to exegete the word exegete the word exegete the word and thoroughly teach this great word of the lord by the faithful character which our lord gives to them in the one of the old testament key attribute of our lord the emet in continual teaching continual preparation continual study so that in nothing they shall be ashamed when they appear before that great presence of lord god almighty and since they have failed to teach relating the things pertaining to this church age 
and relating to the things pertaining to this great realm of incarnation of our Lord and the way how the crucifixion of our Lord was being told by several prophets and one part which has to be exemplified today the life of Judas Iscariot which has been told long back in the book of Zechariah telling to them the way how he shall end up his life and he shall exchange the great glory of God for 30 pieces of silver and when he had the things to think that the entire details of life are enough for him to enjoy but those details of life did not sustain him when he had realized to think that he simply made an innocent blood to be shedded off and he turned out to become psycho in his soul and certainly he went and hanged himself this clear literal description pertaining to the Zudas Iscariot life has been mentioned long back before the church age could be started prior when our Lord's resurrection was into place. Zechariah told long back what will happen to this person, the one who goes and buys the potter's field. He went and threw out those 30 pieces of silver to buy some potter's field. Those who were unable to bury their loved ones who were not having enough energy, enough physical, enough material prosperity. For them, this potter's field was being buyed on those money which he exchanged. And pertaining to these things, very clearly, the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, has made a great discourse for us to read in the book of Zechariah and to know whether that there was such kind of a person who is going to come and whether there was such kind of a man who is going to come and whether there was such kind of a person who certainly gives to them to understand that he will exchange the glory of God for some 30 pieces of silver. We know morons like Zakir Nayak or Sheikh Hamadidad who are not believers in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ where Bible doctrine being the spiritual phenomena demands number one that you believe in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. After believing in that great Lord and Savior Jesus Christ by faith alone in Christ alone by daily learning the word of the Lord, our daily intake of Bible doctrine, which is so much essential for us, without which even our Lord could write and tell for us several times in his days of temptation of 40 days. It is written, it is written, it is written. He thoroughly quoted three times to defend or to divide scripture against the scripture where Satan comes up to tell the wrong quotations and misinterpretation of the scripture but our Lord tells rightly and tells them that we are having our assurance in the word of the Lord. We are having our strong defense and fortification only in the knowledge of Bible doctrine against any odds that can take you not to believe in the Lord or that can cause you to get away from the right track of the plan of God he tells it is written and that is the intention on part of each and every believer in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ today that he has to quote the word and how can he quote the word until and unless he is a believer in the Lord how can he be grown up until and unless he has been there in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit by using the privacy of his priesthood in this great and unique dispensation of the church age that the mentoring ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit should control them and until and unless the mentoring ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit controls them to cleanse the garbage that is there in the soul, they cannot quote the scriptures. And how Lord God the Holy Spirit will control you if you have sin in your thoughts, either by word, deed, or in fact even indeed the motivation behind your thoughts. Do you think Lord God the Holy Spirit will have fellowship with thee? No way, no chance. The fourth cry of our Lord on the cross, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Eli, Eli, lama sabachini. The principal reason behind that cry is that you and me, the reason for it.
though he was not sin was made sin on behalf of us the substitutory spiritual death of our lord on the cross so that he can purchase us and we cannot fulfill that righteousness of the lord but in return we have been given the consciousness the way how judas iscariot consciousness was been speared and he was an unbeliever he realized he did some great mistake and for him money was everything cupidity for lust of over money over women women was nothing but he had much time only to think over money 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 and he did not even ransom for the full price those 30 pieces of silver which he has been exchanged for this great glory of jehovah was literally everything for judas is career and later on what did he realize when he killed that you know some blood when he has been a part of that you know some blood he turned out to become psycho and certainly he went and hanged himself and the greek says the entrails of his body are the one which will be called as excreta split around all the stones that means he was really hanged when you hang yourself due to the pressure the excreta and urine will come out he thought that money could be more he thought money could be great he thought these details of life are very much important today why i'm telling you all these things on one part the failure not to teach the word of the lord accurately another part not able to defend this great word of the lord by thoroughly being learning in a day by day process through proper isagogical categorical and exegetical explanation of the word with the right dispensing technique of dispensations on the other part if a morons those who have been thinking about our crucifixion of our lord about his incarnation about his resurrection they could really understand the way how zechariah prophesied pertaining to the judas is career exact man or what he told it happened because it is the word the omniscient knowledge of god knew very well what is going to happen though it may be 500 years or 5000 years back when he has been written it has been written therefore bible doctrine is been called as divine inspiration theonostas god breathed it is not by any privacy of interpretation by the men but it is purely divine god breathed process and why we are telling to you all these things apostle paul becoming the key man to fulfill matthew chapter 16 verses 18 when our lord prophesied for the first time pertaining to the church and our lord has told them that this revolution of the mystery doctrine is been committed to apostle paul in his writing alone where we can find the doctrine the position the walk and the destiny of the church and we being gentiles to be the fellow heirs being jointly to the same body being the fellow partakers of this great promise of god through the glad tidings of the gospel dear brethren what a great privilege it is for us and besides this the way how they have to rightly divide the word of the lord like an unprofitable slave which is their work to be done under the bona fide gift from the head of the department of the church by daily teaching by daily exegeting by daily categorizing asking them to pay the tithe of that particular day of time 2 hours 40 minutes and asking them to grow up so that such kind of a morons when they rise up we can easily pull down Zechariah might have not understood pertaining to the words when Zechariah told to Judas his career and about Judas his career the way how he thought now it was a mere waste for him to have that money because those details of life never sustained him those details of life never satisfied him at least today the pain of my heart which i am telling to you all in today's christendom so called kleptes lastes misthotes tupas so called canapes tiflos and sharuras the way how they cause you all to be 
fearful not according to the precepts and the direction of God but being made for you to be fearful according to the precepts and direction of their own lustful patterns at least you all can understand it is not the money that you should exchange the glory of God those money will not certainly sustain you the way how Judas Iscariot realized and he went to hang himself before this it could be a great siren of warning for you all so that it is not for money that you should sustain in the ministry today's people who are entering into the ministry are purely for the sake of their own money they have not really understood it is not money it is the work and the word of the Lord that has to be given number one priority the way how Zudas is Iscariot at least realized, though he was an unbeliever, that his conscience never pertained him to stay there. It gave a chance for him, so that he realized this money is nothing, and he went and threw that bag in the place where he bought it, from those Pharisees and Sadducees. And with that money they purchased the potter's field for those who were not even having enough material possession to bury or make a, a respectable burial for their beloved as it was denoted to those charity works in those time you can call. But what did this man do? He went and hanged himself. He hung himself. Before that can happen to the lives of these people who are being so called not having the true bona fide gift of an ideal shepherd or the so called pastor teachers if at all they recognize the legitimate title to be called as poiman didaskalos because Martha called my lord as teachers Mary called my lord as masters but then too they were not really having that great faith in the lord of his teaching the way how Martha misunderstood, telling to the point, Yes, Lord, I know, at the moment of resurrection, he is going to rise. But our Lord said, If you believe, you will see the glory of the Lord. After receiving that discourse, she said that our Lord has come to Mary. And when she came, again, she has her own viewpoint. Lord, if you have been here, my brother wouldn't have been dead. And the thing that really troubled my Lord, which caused to have groanings of his spirit, and tells to them, literally by weeping, though we may understand that it was for Lazarus, but it was for the thing that they did not believe upon him. And they never believed upon him until in the time he could do that miracle or perform that deed. In today's Christendom, many of the people are walking in the same trends. They are not able to believe upon my Lord until and unless some great miracle happens to them. They are not able to look and understand upon this great protocol plan of God given for this church age believers of a great value. And they are not able to believe upon him until and unless they see some miracle. Do you not know the way how Peter tells in Acts chapter 3? It is not by our might nor by our holiness that we could do this miracle that this lame man can be walking now. It is only by the holiness of Jehovah and by the power of his act. Even their lives that could be to be called as holy today many Christendoms have been in this Christendom many people have been guided in that false concept of their minds. He is a holy man, he is a pious man, he has this, he has that. He will be doing this and he will be doing that. And because of that holiness we are able to do the things. The way they have the guts enough to tell along with me, Lord God, the Holy Spirit is going to come to the meetings. Because I am so much holy. And really misleading them, not able to understand what they are talking, what they are teaching. Apostle Peter himself tells, it is not by the mannerisms of my holiness that or our holiness that we could heal this lame man. 
At least those things should certainly cause you to cross-check your righteousness, to look upon your uprightness of attitude. Rather, following these gimmicks after the completion of canon, the true permanent spiritual gifts which are into force, the pastor, teacher, evangelical work, the gift of health and administration, or hospitality, rather than obeying upon this so that you could be having well enough to have your earnest care towards the flock, rather than deceiving them by telling miracles or healings or tongues. It would be better for you all to make each and every believer to be according to the image of God which he has made us after his own likeness. And Ephesians 4.24 teaches for us the great passage ever written by the pen of Ladgad the Holy Spirit through Apostle Paul wherewith we are able to find our doctrine, our position, our walk and above all our destiny in Christ where the church should go and what it is, and why each and every church-age believer in this great alakene ketesis, new spiritual species for Christ, is being given that great privilege and equal opportunity, so that in the privacy of his priesthood, by the confession of his sins, he could be readily available to do Lord's work. And when once you go out of this earth, you are not going to come back again. Before that you could go out of this earth, you should have your spiritual resurrection in Christ. And for that great spiritual resurrection, our Lord has appointed you and anointed you. Therefore, Apostle Paul tells in Philippians 3, you believe it or not, I have not yet attained, I am running, leaving those things which are behind, which are pulling me down back not to do Lord's work. And I am going to attain that great spiritual resurrection in Christ. And you be imitators of me. Because our polytema privileges are of heaven. And we are not of this earth. Nor we do mind the earthly things of this earth. But we don't seek and search those things that are above. Because we don't love to look upon Lord's work. Habakkuk spoke in the anguish of his soul and he went upon the watchtower to take Lord's word and he knelt and he prayed and he was there with the joy of his heart and the praise upon his lips. Who can be, who can do such work or where can a believer be in that realm until and unless he knows that he is in this great unique dispensation of the church age. Heeding to the instructions of these men who have been having critics or having their errors to tell Bible is wrongly translated, this translation is that, that translation is this. Until and unless you go back to the original languages of the scriptures, never you can understand the work of the Lord given to you. Every word of the Lord is pure. Every word of the Lord is like a fire which burns down till to the point of ashes and so that once again you cannot construct it back and the word of the Lord is a fire it burns out that which is contrary to the mind of Christ contrary that you are walking seven times more greater in negative realm seven times the sins that which will be increased for you and literally if you can understand Leviticus chapter 26 verses 27 through 29 I think before those five cycles of disciplines could be executed in the mannerism of our lives that we are walking in Christ, it would be better for us just to believe upon that Lord and walk and to be obeying for His truth rather than walking contrary to His mind. How true and how great it would be for us just to obey His mind literally fulfillment of eating the flesh of their own sons and their daughters the younger one eating the older one the older one who are having enough strength over the infants eating them out and preparing and keeping the best parts for the slot of the drought that has happened purely because they have ignored the great sirens and warnings given through them from Moses and from Zechariah and from our Lord and later on with the gift of tongues for 40 years the Old Testament enables us to have those sirens and warnings all the time wherever we go wrong by grieving and squelching and lying to the ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit and not able to walk according to the true principle of Christ where he has chosen us to walk in him being sanctified justified and called and made us to look upon that great salvation in Christ wherewith we have been chosen 
and then too many people don't understand what for they have been chosen in the Lord. The integrity of their heart should tell. Proverbs 2 7 is the great principle in their life. Our Lord has secluded and has been secluding to keep the righteous that great sound doctrine by giving them a new heart. And our Lord exemplifies for them in the book of Jeremiah chapter 24 to differentiate between the good figs and the bad figs. And for the good figs, our Lord says he is going to give them a new heart. And how they are going to come back? They are going to return unto him with a whole new heart. Isn't it a great privilege for us to sow what we have reaped? And certainly to be absolutely reaping that which our Lord has sowed for us. He gave them heart and they returned with a whole new heart. Isn't it a great privilege for us to look that our Lord has given in this Alec and Echidesis period the true and the right royal spiritual species. Not only just a new heart but he has given us a new spirit. This great reigning power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, never given in the past to be made indwell in them. But that great Shekinah glory has now made an abode to indwell in us. And isn't it a great privilege for us to look that this great royalty of truth which has been laid down for our shoulders. And we are the great Alekenikitesis for the church age. And we, irrespective of our wretchedness, not being born according to the will of this or will of that, but being born according to the will of that great Lord God, the Father in heaven. Do you know, dear brethren, how much has been given for us? And how much has been expected from us? But what are we giving him back? We are giving him grieving and squelching and lying as our gift to our Lord. But our Lord says to those good figs which he has given, I am going to give them a new heart and they shall return to me with the whole new heart. And how much has been given for us and how much has been expected from us. But where are we ending up? As a Christian are we able to stand as a witness to the word of the Lord against these people who have not believed in my Lord? The Ninevites will rise, the king of Sheba will rise against you in the judgment to remember, to understand. When the Jonah was sent, they repented. When Solomon was there, she went to seek and search the wisdom of God. But today, greater than Jonah, our Lord said to those crowd in the Pharisees and scribes while he was ministering on this earth, greater than Jonah is here, greater than Solomon is here, but now it could be in this church age after the completion of canon over 21 centuries, that is what we are in the 2000 years afterwards and leading in the 21st century, our Lord would say, greater than my living ministry, the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit is not here, but it is in you indwelling at the moment of salvation by faith alone in Christ alone. The only one who can reveal to you the scriptures, the only one who can lead unto you for the everlasting truth, the only one who can tell to you this great walk, doctrine, position and the work of the church in Christ being designed as an universal one and every believer being made as a stone of a living one there to be perfect and complete to fitly being framed founded upon that great and unique principle of the chief cornerstone of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ through the doctrine of prophets and through the doctrine of the apostles and what a privilege it is for us to know these things in this church You don't deserve it, you don't work it, you don't really go for it. But certainly we have been given grace for grace. The first grace of our salvation, the second grace being the word of the Lord, completed canon. At the moment of salvation, for which you have been given out of the polity of privileges are many great things. The baptism of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, the completion of canon, the true bona fide gifted pastor teachers whose duty is in return to tell you the word, to teach you the truth. No matter however the chips may fall, the right bona fide duty of the pastor teacher is to train you up, is to teach you in the terms of Lord God Almighty. And he doesn't count his life as dear to him. His life will be only one thing. 
have I taken the burden of the Lord to its end? Have I certainly laid and being pleased my Lord in nothing I shall be ashamed, but rather I have magnified my Lord to the maximum in this flesh which has been given for us because we have shared his destiny and he has made us after the image of his own likeness, says Genesis 1, and we need to be there available for that likeness in Ephesians 4, 24 by putting up the old man and renovating our thinking to the new man. But what are we doing today? We spend our time in that which is of not worth. We spend our thinking in that which is of no value at all. And many of the people have become to such kind of a great extension, dear brethren, by ending up to become kleptes, lustes, misthotes, tupas. And above all, the canapes, the sharuras, and the tiflos minded pastors occupying the pulpits. They themselves do not have even qualified for Ezekiel chapter 18, verses 4 through 9. The just and the pious man, the way how he can be, which our Lord clearly given for them as an instruction. But today, above all that, we have been made righteous and we have to prove our approval of righteousness. And if you are being called to be the Christian, you should know that you should be a disciple of that great Lord. You believe it or not, you should be the disciple of that great Lord. You should daily intake the word of the Lord. And if the believer's duty is to daily intake the word of the Lord, then how much more will it be the duty of the pastor teacher in training them up in this great mystery doctrine of the church age where Apostle Paul was being committed to teach in his writings the position, the walk, the doctrine and the destiny of the church. And this great mystery doctrine is the only realm where we, the Gentile believers, will become one flesh to know what are we sharing in Christ. And no other doctrines of the things written apart from Apostle Paul, you can have close enough to look. What is this mystery? What is this mystery? What is this mystery? Planned in eternity past for these believers to be the founded one before the foundation of the world in Christ, in his love to be holy and blameless. And what a great privilege it is for us to understand these things. That this man has been revealed by holy apostles and prophets by his spirit to understand the greater and the true purpose in Christ. And that greater and true purpose in Christ which leads them to look that we have been taken inheritance among the saints. The hikana or verb which has been used to render fit, to be qualified. And no matter however manner you go, we are being now delivered, you believe it or not. We are being delivered from the kingdom of darkness and we are being certainly translated, methistemi, they have been transforced. If not, we have been transferred, we have been removed from one place to another and speaking a change of position in place and we have been removed and says the image of methistemi is supplied by the wholesale transportation of people and we have been now taken into the kingdom of his dear beloved son the son who is the object of his love and who to whom therefore the kingdom is been given Therefore, dear brother and Hebrews 1, 3 through 9 tells to us the true love that which has been the essence of the Son as to the Father, also the Son's mission in the revelation of Father's love. But we need to know that exalted Christ is the one who rules. Dear brethren, we have been given this great privilege to know in his love that he has transformed us from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear beloved son which is after the light and the verb hikanao which calls us that we have been made sufficient we have been rendered fit or qualified the standing of the believer in the lord and savior jesus christ not the christian character the christian character now you should conform to the image of his son because those before the foundation of the world whom our lord has predestined by foreknowing them progenisco and prohorizon and he calls them to be justified in christ and whom he has called them he has certainly 
made them to be conforming to the image of his son you believe it or not every believer in the lord and savior jesus christ who believes in my lord is to be conformed to the image of his son by the renovation of his thinking by thinking the terms of our lord which he has kept for this church age and if you are not going through the doctrine of apostle paul particularly the things pertaining to the mystery doctrine of the church age and going there upon for the godliness and looking there upon this great unique spiritual life of you sabian and from there on for the pastor teachers to emphasize to teach upon this godliness you will never know the doctrine the position the walk where our lord has kept the true character for this church age in telling them what a great privilege it is for us which has been clearly delineated through apostle paul the destiny of each and every church age believer in the church as a living sacrificial stone for christ this church age doctrine is of very much importance the mystery which was hid in god was a divine purpose the mystery that we men be gentiles could become the fellow heirs the partakers of being jointly to that same body of his glad tidings the church which is the lord's body which has been found by the baptism of lord god the holy spirit first corinthians 12 12,13 this is where many people have failed particularly the pentecostal crowds and they are still running in the same gimmicks to tell because of their holiness they will receive the tongues because of their gibberishly pious nature minded which they are living in the rastasi they will receive this tongues and how much thankful and grateful we need to be to our lord who has rescued us from all of such traps and given us this true infallible and inerrant word and how can lord give us this until and unless you have in your heart to pray to the lord to say the lord shall judge the people according to the righteousness according to the integrity that is in me and if you are not able to judge yourself to have a right and true fellowship with that great lord god almighty then you will certainly not and never pray about this prayer because you should be judged after the mannerisms of the righteousness which has been laid down upon your soul until and unless you go on to search according to the mannerisms which has been laid down upon the righteousness of your soul you will never seek to learn sound doctrine therefore it is always a judging point in you to have a right and true fellowship with that great lord god almighty without having that true and right fellowship with that great lord god almighty there is nothing that you can understand about the sound doctrine but in return where you will fall since you are not judging your position in christ since you are not examining yourself in the measurement of the righteousness of christ given to you certainly you will end up in those things which have no value at all which are nothing but wood hay and stubble which will be burnt off which don't have any meaning at all which don't have any purpose at all and you think this life is great i will follow this no way no chance the life has no meaning dear brethren you believe it or not until and unless you first believe in the lord and savior jesus christ as an unbeliever and after becoming a believer until unless you use the privacy of your priesthood in the confession of your sins through rebound and be controlled of the spirit and walk in the spirit live in the spirit and yield unto the fruit of the spirit until that time your life has no meaning no purpose therefore what it is it is a day by day examination in fact even indeed breath by breath examination are we being controlled of the spirit or in the old sin nature if you are being controlled in the spirit you will come to cleanse the garbage that is there in your thinking in your soul and certainly your heart should be cleansed because lord has given you the new heart and called you to walk according to the image of his new one putting off the new old man and putting on the new man and this new man has been made in kai hosi it is the salatia and you should walk in the fellowship of the truth so that you could be benignant enough whenever you raise your holy hands or whenever you manifest your holy life benignity of the truth and majority of the christians today including the pastors have not understood what it is that they have to judge themselves 
rather dying sin unto death, not able to concern warring discipline, intensified discipline, or the five cycles of disciplines mentioned in Leviticus 26 and Deuteronomy 28. What it is literally that is happening around in this evil Christian realm. What it is they have turned out to become robbers, thieves. And do you know what they are robbing and what they are taking out from you? This true spiritual life, this mystery doctrine of the church age, the power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit to be manifested upon you when you walk in the integrity of the truth so that you could know every believer who has been given this chance to reach MGG, maximum glorification of Christ by passing down the three adult stages spiritual self-esteem then spiritual autonomy and then looking back into spiritual maturity the ten problem solving devices so that from personal sense of destiny of problem solving device number six you can have personal love towards God and then impersonal love towards all mankind and sharing the happiness of God and being occupied with Christ day by day process and it is the bonafide duty of the pastor teacher to teach day by day not week by week Week by week is never designed for the church. It is no way related in the church to attain week by week. Bible doesn't recognize that. To be called you as a Christians, Bible recognizes the whole one year they were been taught doctrine and that place where the doctrine was been taught, it was been called. Dear brethren, you believe it or not, it was been called. For the first time in Antioch, the Christians where they have been certainly made disciples by daily teaching. And what do disciples do? Our Lord said it will be best for you all to become like the Master or equivalent to the Master. And in simple terms, our Lord was telling to them, which Apostle Paul exemplifies in Romans 8, 29 through 39. Our Lord was telling to his disciples, it is better for you all to become like me. That is what to the master, equivalent to him. And that is what it meant to say, to conform to the image of his son. Where Apostle Paul writes in Romans 8, 29. Whom he has predestined, them he has called. Whom he has called, them he has glorified. And them who has been justified, for them he tells he has been glorifying them. Isn't it a great privilege for you all to have your inheritance among the saints? But still these people think we are not being baptized by the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, at the moment of salvation. This church is totally different, dear brethren. It is not in comparison to the Old Testament dispensations. It is neither comparison to the future dispensations of your eschatological events. We are in the church. The church has totally different attitude than to those of the Old Testament. But in return, in the grace of our Lord, we have been given much more so that we could not be the failures like the way half the Israelites were, but rather in return, we could be the true MGG believers for Christ when we could become only disciples of the Lord and we could become the true bona fide gifted ideal shepherds by laying down our soul to the flock of that great Lord God Almighty by daily teaching and exegeting the truth, the truth, the truth. You believe it or not, this by the baptism of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, the body of Christ has been formed and in which the earthly dis distinction of Jew and Gentiles have been disappeared. Ephesians 2, 14, 15, Colossians 3, 10 and 11. The revelation of this mystery which was foretold but not explained by our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in Matthew 16, 18 was been now committed to Paul, the least of all the saints, he says. And he is just been committed to him after the mannerism of the gift, 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 the grace of God. Today the pulpits have forgot the concept of the gift of Christ. If you are a male believer you need to have to preach the word then certainly you should have this bona fide gift. And therefore we do find in Romans 9 not that one who runs, not that one who is steadfast, not that one who is early early prepared. But it is the favorable grace of Lord, the mercy of Lord to whom he has to send. And to them whom he has sent, he knew in his omniscient knowledge, we will judge according to what we see. That's what Samuel did in choosing a king. He thought the fourth son of Jesse will be the king. And he thought to rise and anoint him. But Lord said, no, wait. You look outward, but I look inward. And his attitude, his talk, his mannerisms, his nature, 
Lord knows very well what is there even the motivation behind your thought and whether you will be really worthy enough to carry his word. In eternity past, he knows. It is not the poised nature of your life that you're going to live, the holy mannerism of walk of life that you're going to make. Because many people think the father of the church is so great, then certainly the son also will be good because he has never come out, he has never spoken a bad word, he has never been indulged in bad company, but he's always true and he's always right. And why can't he have this gift? No way, no chance. It is Lord's choice and Lord's mercy. But Lord knows what he is, what he is thinking, what he is not. But we may look the outward appearance to tell that he will be renderly fit and he will be qualified for this. No way. Though he sits and meditates in Bible and takes upon the Bible for a long time and by hearts all the chapters and he can quote the scriptures upon his fingertips, that is not the mannerism. Until and unless Lord God, the Holy Spirit teaches you, trains you up. The one who doesn't know the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ power after believing upon him and being experiential in growing up in the knowledge of the Holy One in the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, the one between this and the one who quotes like Zachary Nayak doesn't know what exactly is the power of it. There is no difference between Zachary Nayak and the one who sits and studies the word of the Lord all the days of his life and never comes to know, to discern and to teach with wisdom which Lord gives to them to tell a right word spoken in the right time. They will never come. Though he may be called to be pious, though he may call to be very honest and very holy, that will be in the terms and conditions of his own thinking, but not, not and never with Christ. This is a true bona fide gift which has to be committed by the Lord for us. Without this bona fide gift, no matter you may have your background of theological colleges, you may have the background of your father being a great pastor, or you may have XYZ reasons to tell that we are pure in the things pertaining to their academics or their colleges or their XYZ reasons. But all those will not qualify. It is the mercy of the Lord to whom he sees fit to give this bona fide gift in the omniscient knowledge of God. He knew who will be faithful enough to carry this burden, not even desiring their life dearer unto them. What is there on this earth that you can cherish and nourish? The details of life. Do you not know how the way Judas Iscariot threw out that money, though he had much pleasure over a woman than that... The, much pleasure in the money than that woman because he was not even interested in woman the pleasure what he had was much in money and what did he do he threw out he learned that those details of life will not sustain him those details of life will not occupy him for it to be honest and they are not going to carry him further because they are material Nothing they get, nothing they take from this earth. There's details of the life which Lord is going to supply us according to the riches of His grace. In Christ Jesus, those details which our Lord supplies to us are of an esteemed glory for Him. Not that we acquire, we possess, we do this, we do that and take it by cheating, by deceiving others. But certainly how our Lord blesses us according to His riches when we are doing His will. That will be of a great value, that will be of a great glory, that will be of a great thing for you. And today's Christian, now we are able to find those men who are not at all able to understand the principle of reality in the word of the Lord. Like Zulas is career, they want to exchange the great glory of God to lie. The details of life. And they have not understood that we are the very special creation of Christ. We are the very peculiar treasure apart from those which our Lord mentioned for the Jews to be his the apple of eye. But we are being called the most peculiar treasure, the most peculiar treasure in Christ. Because he has purchased us, he has redeemed us with his own price. The price, the cross. And now we can pay the price by believing upon him and receive it. By faith alone in Christ alone. But majority of the men in today's Christendom have lost. 
have been left this earth for 2000 years who have not understood that thing which has been committed to Paul was a bona fide gift and those who are faithful enough in teaching this mystery doctrine of the church age we should be so much thankful to the Lord because in every era Lord knows certain faithful men who has received and kept the key men who teach the doctrine more than their life the key men who have interest only in the word of the Lord than anything else on this earth the key men who will train you in return to have to be impressed upon that great Lord you should require doctrine in your consciousness and Lord knows very well who they are and in the due course of time Lord knows because of that mercy bestowed upon them to rise against the teachings of this earth in the Christendom from the mind of man rather than teaching in the mind of the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit and he rises them in the due course of time against every odd of detail that could happen in his life he preserves them he secures them because he has already secured and kept for them the greatest life that could ever be there on this earth. This greatest life, there is nothing than to become the bona fide gifted pastor teacher on this earth. The real thrill that could be for you. The real cherishment and nourishment in the grace of the Lord to be enjoyed, to be more specific because whenever you have trials temptations and sufferings you are enjoying the grace of God above all these things there if you want to enjoy more thrill more kick in the grace of God then you become a pastor teacher you will certainly know what is the pressure that a pastor teacher has the key person how he has to be and how the pressures of the details of life will certainly entangle him and how Satan wants to see that he doesn't teach the word and be disturbed in his mind be ground in his thoughts and above all these things, do you know what it reigns? The grace of God. The grace of God leads him to enjoy that grace. To have a self-sufficiency in the word of the Lord. He becomes a Macarian one, Christ already. And he doesn't require any other funds so that he could be satisfied, including even the minute details of his life. He requires only Christ to be there. As Moses told, Lord, if you are not going, we are not going to live from this. Until unless you lead us, we are not going to out from this camp so will be his life Lord today what I have to do the breath what I have given to me what I have to teach what preparation is there left over for me how much portion is there still for me to communicate in the words and languages of the scriptures how the believers will come if there are no hearers Lord what I have to do he is not worried about all these things he is worried about only one thing what I have to teach what I have to study what I have to learn what I have to teach what I have to teach what I have to teach if he has been thoroughly prepared Lord sends the hearers for him there is no need for him to be worried about the hearers and go on for evangelical work and advertising this and that. Lord knows how to send the hearers for him. And what a great privilege it is for us to look. That thing which has been committed to Paul after the mannerism of the gift given to him. The word minister which has been used in Ephesians 3 7. A servant seen in his activity. The word deacon comes from this Greek word. The Greek word refers to the one who serves. The word minister is misleading. Since it is the technical word used today to designate the pastor of a church, Paul merely meant that he became one who ministered the gospel, served God in that capacity of dikaionos. The gift of the grace of God is the gift consisting in the grace and the particular grace in view of his apostleship office or the ministry to the Gentiles. Today now we should have the gift in the view of the office of the pastor teachers towards the church because church is a combination of all the people now, Jews, Gentiles or anyone. Anyone now who believes is the church. So because of this gift which has been given for us, we need to be very readily to give according to the working of his power in us. The gift of pastor teacher should be according to the working ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit in his dunamis power so that we could be manifesting the kratos power of the Lord by showing forth the iskun strength. What a great privilege it is for us, dear brethren.
When Apostle Paul writes, the gift of the apostleship was according to the work of his power. That is what the power here refers to, the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Now if it is for us, the gift of the pastor teacher should be working according to the power of the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. And furthermore, the gift was bestowed for Apostle Paul in accordance with that efficiency which could transform Saul the persecutor into Paul the Apostle to the Gentiles. From Saul the persecutor to Paul the Apostle to the Gentiles. The way of Zechariah chapter 3 teaches about Joshua, the high priest. Satan comes with a railing accusation to tell he is not fit. But our Lord says, I have made him qualified to be fit. And after thereon, when he was wearing the robes of that great high priest and wearing the cap or the hat upon his head, when once he has been converted, when once he has been redeemed, when once he has been given this privilege, his whole life has been dead and crucified. Like the way how Saul the persecutor was been now the Paul of Paul the Apostle to the Gentiles. So will be the true ideal bona fide gifted pastor teacher from the head of the department of the church. His old mannerism of life is gone. Now his only life will be to study and teach, to study and teach, to study and teach. Not to entangle himself to please to be coming to be the itching ears of the heaping to them for that they could have their minds settled for it to become like people like priest. He comes out from all this rubbish attitudes. How to please men, how to please women, how to make them to be how giving them the gifts for them. He doesn't worry about all these things. He worries only about one thing, what the word says. Are you righteous enough to take into consideration about it? Or are you still ignoring to consider what is the truth? Because our Lord says, the Lord shall judge the people according to the righteousness that is there in you, according to the integrity that is in me. Or let the wickedness of the wicked come to an end but establish the just. That was the prayer of Apostle Paul when he became an apostle. Today the bona fide gifted pastor teacher should pray the same thing. Let the wickedness of the wicked one come to an end, but you establish the right and true teachings in the pulpits because Lord, you have designed the church to teach daily. For the righteous, God knows how to try them, their hearts and reins, and our defense is of God who saves the upright in the heart and God judges the righteous and God is very much angry upon those who are wicked. You get in the sense using the grace of God in vain for their own selfish desires by rising gimmicks and tricks. And furthermore it stands written, if you turn not, you will, he will wet his sword. That, will, that means he will forge you. He that bent his bow, he made it to be ready. He hath also prepared for him the instruments of death. He ordained his arrows against the persecutors. That is what, without having the true bona fide gifted pastor teacher, this is what will be the result. He will be prepared for him the instruments of death. Why do you want to die a sinner to death? Because many people today in today's Christendom are wasting their life to die a sinner to death, including the pastors. And when they are being out by not judging themselves, how the Lord judges them to be righteous enough to the work of the Lord which has called for them, certainly they are dying sin unto death. The majority of the Christians today do not know why the pastor is having sickness in him. Because the pastor has failed to understand that his life is immortal until the work of the Lord has been done. And the work of the Lord for him is to daily study and teach, teach, teach from Genesis 1, 1 to Revelation 20, 21, 20 to 21. And he will never stop exegesis. And he will never stop daily teaching the pulpit. But when he fails to do this, the word of the Lord says, he prepares the instruments of death and he ordains the arrows against the persecutors. And the result will be traveling with iniquity, 
conceiving mischief and he brings falsehood, lies. The travelling pain by not teaching the truth. You will conceive what mischief. Zechariah, Jeremiah chapter 23 teaches us a great discourse pertaining to the pastors. Lo, I am against them who steal my words. Lo, I am against them who teach light things. Lo, I am against them who have become the Sharuras. They have made the inhabitants of Gomorrah and the pastors have become like the Sodomites. What they are conceiving? They are conceiving lies that is of not truth. They are executing their life for mischiefs. The end product is what? Falsehood. Without true exegesis. Isagogics and categories. You will find only falsehood. Stealing away the true words of the Lord and teaching them lies. Why do you want to end up in lies and consume false word? He makes himself a pit and digs it and falls into the ditch which he has made. His mischief, what he has consumed, will return upon his own head, and the oil in dealing shall come down upon his own pit. But we should raise and praise the Lord according to the manner of his righteousness. And we need to sing praise to the name of Lord Most High, who has still preserved and kept certain faithful men in rightly dividing the word of the Lord after the mannerism of the gift given to them. Dear brethren, why do you want to exchange your life for that which is of a lie? Zudas is covered, repented. But that repentant, without believing in the Lord, led him to hang. The majority of the Christians today are following the same path, repentance, but not in the right manner. Pastor teachers till now, they have not yet repented to think that they are kleptes, lestes still. They are too past minded to think very much proud and arrogant enough to teach daily the word of the Lord, having their own legalized mannerisms of excuses. But you believe it or not, when the Old Testament was being full of sirens, when the Old Testament was being full of warnings, it was of inexcusable one because Lord taught them 2000 years back through Moses, then through Zechariah, then through the physical presence of our Lord, then through the gift of tongues by the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit upon them by the warning of tongues for those 40 years from AD 30 to AD 70 then too they never changed today the same ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit teaching to all the truth to give number one priority for doctrine why do you want to perish in your things and if you are not having the true bona fide gift of that of the department of the church from him to teach the word of the Lord then why do you want to enter into the pulpits and destroy the true plan and purpose of God but there is nothing that can go against the will of God in destroying it. Because our Lord's alone, or because my Lord alone shall reign forever and forever. And it is He who we, whom we shall fear and we shall have our dread. It is an everlasting reigning power of the Lord. Though the remnant could be little, then too Lord knows how to save them. Then too Lord knows how to win in this battle. Because He uses His men for His work. The battle which our Lord prepares, it is only for Him. We still never known the power of His Word, how much it really works in us. We are still walking among two things, disbelief and unbelief. Unbelief not realizing the truth, disbelief not able to look upon the power of the Word. And though we are exploring you the truth, you don't believe it. But our Lord says the great passage in Jeremiah chapter 24 to tell. Like this good fig said, saying to Judah, he says that I am sending them to the land of Chaldeans for their good. And I have set my eyes upon them for good, for good. When Lord has kept his eyes upon us for good, then certainly he will bring them again to build them up for the purpose where which has called and he will plant them and there will be nothing that shall pluck them out. 
the simple principle of our Lord tells in the Gospel of John. After salvation you are being saved, there is nothing that can pluck them out from the hand of Lord God the Father. There is nothing that can pluck them out. What a great privilege it is for us that these words under the mentoring ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit is so much reserved and so much preserved and kept for this church age believers even to learn from the Old Testament Holy Prophets. But we are not able to believe that because you don't believe the good which Lord has kept for each and every believer in this church age. If our Lord has set high upon us in this Alec Enicetesis, then remember that you should prove your righteousness by giving number one priority for doctrine. And the way how our Lord has designed and kept for this church age doctrine for every believer's own wisdom, it is for the great privilege in Christ for us to give this so that we could be readily available for His work. His work of MGG, his work to witness against the people who have been there in the previous crooked minders generation so that we could be a witness for the truth and tell Lord my life has taught them that you have given this privilege to teach them but then too they never really changed. If I am flawless O Lord then judge according to your principle. But since we, the believers, are flawful by not being in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, by not giving number one priority for doctrine, then certainly the unbelievers, though they are inexcusable by not believing in the Lord, you are not inexcused because you have not been witness for the truth. What are you witnessing in common terms with them? Your prostitution, your robbery, your mental attitude, sins of bitterness, clustering of sins, cogs of carnality, your mind web which has been filled with cobwebs of jealousy, sins. You are witnessing this in same terms with unbeliever on this earth. But Lord has not chosen you nor called you for this purpose. He has called you to be for the confirmation of the image of His Son by yielding for the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, temperance, patience towards self, towards others, towards God. Daily learning the word of the Lord, having to love to look upon God's temple to be a witnesses with glory of heavenly realm on this earth and towards others trying to snatch them, Romai, as many as we can. This simple process has been made complicated by giving yourselves to legalisms, by not giving your priority for virtue in Christ but morality in your standards of your own human viewpoint. And majority of the people have gone where the word of the Lord says, though I have set for them good things, they want to look upon their own volition and end up in bad things. End up in either not able to understand the warning discipline, ending up not able to understand the intensified stage of discipline, ending up not able to think that if they don't listen to these two warnings, they will certainly end up in sin unto death. And once again they will come with their legalisms. Once again they will come with their moron-minded standards of their thinking. But then too, people will not believe, people will not come up, people will not stand up. And what do they find? They find sowing to the wind and reaping war wind. Then too, they will not change. Though they see their own examples in their own midst of their own family members. Why such kind of a sufferings? They want to go to some point of a person who is going to elevate them from those sufferings. Because of His holiness, that's what they think. See, so many people are following. Let us go and look upon the miracles or healings which has been made by Him. But what the Word says, Peter himself proclaims, not because of our holiness that this man could be healed, to show forth the might and the power of Lord God Almighty. Likewise, when we, when we are going through these things of sufferings, you should know why you are not able to have that great peace of God garrisoning your hearts, because which is superior about every mental state, even the conceptional of your thoughts, which could cause you to think that they are, they are reigning in you. Above all these things, that great peace of God should rule, and it demands, dear brother, you believe it or not, your constant prayer, petition, thanksgiving, 
only when you rejoice in the Lord, again to say rejoice in Christ. But the majority of the men have not understood these simple things. They go on to think the elevation of suffering will be by the so-and-so called pastor who is doing this work, by the so-and-so called minister who is having so many people to follow. They are forsaking the living waters for broken systems. Forsaking this great living water which is free, which is gracious. Inviting for you all the one who is thirsty, come and take. Because Lord has a good plan for you. Lord has a better days for you so that he has kept his eye upon you in this church age believer by this indwelling ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit by making you to be his temple. But you say, no, Lord, we will exchange for broken system. And we will seek and search for our own realm. Those things which could be worthy enough for us to seek, rather than looking upon your word, rather than considering upon thy truth. We will say, Lord, we will search and seek broken systems. So what? Lord is a gentleman, he's not going to go against your volition. But if in your conscience the way how Judas Iscariot certainly converted to think, those 30 pieces of silver is not his life. The details of life could certainly mean nothing when his conscience certainly broken out to tell that he has killed an innocent person. Innocent blood he has deceived, not killed. At least that consciousness you should have as a pastor teacher to communicate the word of the Lord effectively, as a believer to witness for the truth among the midst of this perverse and crooked generation, believe, unbelievers who have not known about this great light of God. And our Lord has made us to be the salt and light of this earth. If you can have that sort of repentance, change of mind, and now believe in the Lord and work for the works pertaining to Christ then certainly how much renovation we can make on this earth. Because the five cycles of discipline which Lord has designed for those Israelites are a great warning for us. And in the due course of time, till the rapture of the church, which could be to the very next of your heartbeat, Lord knows what he has designed and kept for this church. Therefore, if you can judge yourself wherever you are, you shall not be judged, saith our Lord. In the privacy of your priesthood, to have great repentance because the believer has been indwelled by Lord God, the Holy Spirit, by the confession of his sins, and he has been given this great dynamic power with the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, to seek and search for those things which are in Christ. Then certainly he will see the good days on this earth. He shall see the long life on this earth. He shall see the peace of God among the, amongst the midst of all these trials. The greatest pressure that could be, could be only for the pastor teacher, not even for the president of the country of USA. The greatest pressure for him each and every day in teaching the word, exegeting the word, isolating the word, categorizing the word, teaching them in the concept of dispensations and making them to look what is the doctrine, the position, the walk and the destiny of the church and where every believer ought to be in this great manifold wisdom of God in the university from the great pastor teacher who is the dean and that believer should be the angel, the professor to the angels by being learnt by the church, the glory of God. Only the bona fide gifted pastor teacher will be, bur will be burdened with that, with that burden to teach the truth. How can he leave the earth by not teaching them the entire thing? Therefore, Apostle Paul gives an example for us, three and a half years, day and night. When he was living in Acts chapter 20 and many morons want to quote Acts chapter 20 verses 26 through 28. Then Apostle Paul tells, my life was to be absolutely pure from the blood of this year was because I have not shown to declare to them the entire counsel of God and I have declared to them the entire counsel of God. Therefore I am pure from their blood. 
what a privilege it would be if you as a minister given for you the church and if you can tell those things rather than looking upon to be kleptes, lestes, misthotes, tupas rather than looking up looking upon them to be the canapes, tiflos and sharuras rather than being over here how privileged it would be for you all to think and to understand that the burden of the Lord wherewith you are enjoying with the privileges of the church and not able to pay them the true exegesis from Genesis 1 1 to Revelation 22 21 in Hebrew Greek and Aramaic and training them up and getting oriented to this great plan of God before the foundation of the world being designed for good works so that we could be a witness for truth against this world where this world doesn't believe the truth. rather than looking upon these things why you want to look upon the heart that forsakes Lord God Almighty but our Lord has not given them the heart to forget he has given them the indwelling ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit to know them through the heart being circulating to pump the word of the Lord and our Lord said then only they shall be my people when the word of the Lord has been circulated in them and I will be their God then when they are been taking number one priority for the word because they shall return unto me with their whole new heart this is what he mentioned for the fix but now it will be only when they are written in the perfect pleroma status quo being perfectly made thoroughly completed says Colossians 1 25 to 29 when they shall return unto me for MGG with a true perfect heart then I shall be their God then there they shall be my people and I shall not be ashamed to call them as my children see if, they, if our Lord says those things to us then how much more burden it should be for us to remember about those things but what do we do we don't look upon that because you all are much worried and burdened not to be the children of God because you don't prove your righteousness if you don't prove your righteousness certainly you're not going to look upon sound doctrine and when you fail to look upon sound doctrine certainly dear brethren you believe it or not you are no Christians only a disciple can be a Christian in Christ. Only a daily teaching pastor can be the true bona fide gifted pastor from the head of the department of the church given to him. And what does he do as Saul did? Converting from Saul the things pertaining to be the persecutor into the Paul, the apostle of Gentiles. Now the thought of the dignity of the office he had received at the cost of such grace and power at once evokes the sense of his own utter unworthiness to which he gives stronger expression here than even in 1 Corinthians 15 9 or 2 Corinthians 12 11 the words the less than the least are alecrestoteras comparative formed on a superlative literally more least than all the same the word is Elakestoteras the words which have been given for us more least than all the saints if the right bona fide duty of the pastor teacher is he will consider himself I am not worthy it is he who shall speak but not we and the word which has been used as an unsearchable riches the virtue the riches that are in Christ which are in him the wealth which contained only in Christ the whole wealth of salvation and then this whole wealth of Bible doctrine which is of being to be fully comprehended by men that is what he has to make them to know fully comprehend in the power of the gift given to them so that they could be utterly known the importance of this doctrine And only the true bona fide gifted pastor teacher can make that to be comprehended for man by his daily teaching. And the believer who could be faithful enough in the sight of the Lord can do that only when his daily learning in that principle given for them. So dear brethren, Zachary Naik will never know the prophecy of Zechariah told concerning Judas career. But you believers, if you fail to learn these things and defend 
the glory of Lord which is to honor above his word, his name. Because above his name he has honored his word. Then even you are no less far better than Zakir Nayak. Because you have not known, not learned the truth. Though the Old Testament gives you several warnings to correct your parts. The New Testament emphasizes about the spiritual gift of a bona fide one so that the men could comprehend the true unsearchable riches of Christ by daily teaching the much variegated color wisdom of the Lord and if you are not able to prove and show for them this unsearchable riches of Christ because it has been given to you as a gift and you are the link between the church and the body of Christ between the head and the body of Christ you are being the link jointing them with thorough nourishment and cherishment in the word of the Lord then better you would be getting out from that place if you don't have this gift and if you are not doing this work properly because you have become an stumbling block it will be like this, if you have a true bona fide gift, you will become a catalyst of a good one to proceed the reaction, to yield its end product. And if you are not the true bona fide gifted pastor teacher, then you will be the negative catalyst who will see that the reaction of the Lord will never continue. Because you will become the one whom our Lord says to the Pharisees and scribes, you have taken keys, neither you have entered nor you have made others to enter. So will be your fate. Why do you want to repent at the judgment seat of Christ, at the Bhima throne, rather than repenting right now in this church, at the moment if you are having still the physical breath, and to seek and search to do Lord's will by daily exegeting the word with proper eyes concept in the dispensations, rather than wasting your time not to be the listeners for the word and not to be the ones pertaining what the Bible teaches and what you are practicing contrary to the mind of Christ. Don't worry, people may be impressed, but Lord is not. And when Lord is not impressed, He will see that He doesn't have good things for you and He will never keep His eyes upon you for better things. We require the best, isn't it? Then do the service of the Lord by seeking His righteousness and proving your righteousness according to the integrity of the Lord. Because Lord searches and seeks your reins and hearts and certainly is going to make you to be obedient for His truth by daily teaching the Word. If you are a pastor, teacher, and if you are a believer, daily learning and growing up in the knowledge of Bible doctrine. So dear brethren, consider over these things as we shall come back and continue tomorrow because there are many things to continue and to talk and to teach but the wind is too strong today. With our head bowed and eyes closed, the closing movements being dedicated to those who are here without Christ, without hope and without eternal life. In order to telling to Lord God the Father that you believe upon Christ, that is the moment itself, you shall have this eternal truth. This eternal truth for us is very simple. Believing Christ, you shall be saved. Whereas for the believer, the greatest mind is to grow up in grace and knowledge of Bible doctrine. You shall learn to acquire the possession of the truth, and the truth shall set you free. And for the pastor teacher, the greatest mind is to carry us on Logan, herald the word in season out of season, because of the diamond my witnesses, wherewith you have been called. The number one diamond to my witnesses in Willing Trinity, followed by Bible in our hands. Number two diamond to my witnesses are hearers. If they there are no hearers, dear brethren, not worry besides nature. The entire angelic host will be our witnesses. But what is our work? Our work is to faithfully, rightly divide the word of the Lord. When we are being faithfully prepared, no matter how the chips may fall, because Lord has given us this great spirit in us to indwell, that great Lord God Almighty of the Trinity indwells in us, then what a privilege it will be for us to be faithful enough in giving, in, in taking the burden laid down upon our shoulders while we are still young. That's what Lamentations 3.21 says. And carry this yoke, because our Lord says my yoke is easy and you can carry it so it is Lord who is going to working in us to do his will and we should be ready available because what else we are having to stand before the judgment seat of Christ and say and to tell Lord we have done that which, that which is which is our duty to be done like an unprofitable slave that's it and we have nothing more desire on this earth than to certainly cherish and nourish in the daily growth of doctrine so which way you go you decide we shall come back and continue Father, we are very grateful for this great privilege that was given to fellowship with you through the word. Father, we pray that Lord God, the whole will challenge us by this message, so that Sovereign Lord, thou Lord, might be glorified. Sanctify us through this message, so that Father, we could know the true calling in Christ. In Christ's name we pray, Sovereign Lord. Amen.